All right, Pot of Gold, welcome back. I'm Brett. I'm here with Mike. I'm here yeah. with Mike in studio, kind of more like a bedroom. Uh, Grant's lair, I guess we can call it. it. It feels good to have the boys back. Grant, scoot into the picture. Great, get in just viewers. a little bit. Look at those there knees. He is. We're all here. So back in the business. The plan is to record the pod, and I think we're going to try to premiere it on YouTube. Obviously, if you're seeing the video, you're gonna you're gonna know that's what we're doing, but. Little afternoon rip, little signing day rip for the boys. Um, a it's lot to talk Thursday, about. Right? Thursday, right? Thursday, December twenty second. December twenty second. It's almost Christmas. It is almost Christmas. We have a few days. A lot of lot of crazy moving parts in all of our personal lives right now. I need to look somewhere else. I can't. I don't know that I could sit just here and watch me, you dude. just lounging in the bed for for an hour here. But that's okay. We're gonna figure it out. <laughs> We're gonna pat, persevere and uh, push through. Uh, I really wanted to lay in this bed. Like that was my mission. The minute you we... saw the the <laughs> Gillis video where they were in the hotel bed and they were they yeah. chopping it up, and you've been wanting to do it ever since. Do you want me? To, you want me to hop? I don't in? mind it. It might take another hour of reconstructing <laughs> our cords, but uh, but yeah, no, I wanted to chill. I wanted to kick back. Speaking of Gillis, I'm going to see him in San Antonio, February fourth. I'm jealous. That's going to be awesome. It's be pretty tight. Got seats right up front. So yeah, he might call me out. Get it um yeah guys look hit us up on twitter at pot of gold at gold mike pot of gold at gmail.com uh just a lot of stuff going on this week so let's just kind of jump into it it's signing day we're going to talk a lot about recruits a lot about classes uh probably maybe by the time yeah, you gotta stop staring at me dude. i okay i'll look at grant <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm kidding i'm yeah, trying just... to like kind of see your monitor and uh see what's happening I, I've been a little out of the loop for the last few days. Congratulations. That's, that's okay. Let's put what it happened? out there. Little, out little there. baby boy born last week. So that was a, a little bit of the, the delay. And um, Future NIL deal in the making. Yeah, we're quarterback. already looking at NIL opportunities. Uh, if well, there's any lawyers. When you first – okay, so backstory. When you first had the baby, uh, you put in the group me something about the Purdue quarterback opting out of the bowl game. Yes. I read it. That's a no days off thing. Like credit to me, yeah. your boy was still kind of pushing content while shit was hair. For sure. But I immediately thought like, okay, the baby was just born and he's talking about Purdue quarterbacks. Like boiler up. Like boiler. he wants this kid straight to Purdue. Like we got an Indiana cat on the way. So. Education is number one. We, we want to graduate champions in this house is kind of what we're looking at. Yeah. Just going straight uh, to the big 10 away from yes. the SEC immediately. So, which is funny. What do you think? No, we don't need to get into that. I was just going to say, like, would it be the big 18 by the time that, that in 18 years when this kid would be? It's just going to be one of the three monsters. Yeah. I think there's going to be three conferences very soon. So we'll see. But yeah, dude, it's Thursday, day after signing day. The first actual Brian Kelly, I would say, full cycle of recruiting. He obviously mentioned it in his press conference where it's like I wasn't – it was easier because I wasn't selling – I have something to kind of show that we're selling here. Like this graduate champions isn't like a farce. It's not something we just say. It's not NIL, all glory under God, uh, as, that Dabo, as Dabo might have put it. Yeah. We'll get to that. Later. It's uh, it's so funny. The fact, I have that, the fact that he used program, it's like the Venn diagram of people who would say NIL something Jesus and use program are it's just a circle. There's Wait, no, how did he group Jesus with NIL? He, he said, said it's yeah, we're I'm big on NIL, but it's God's name, name and image, image and likeness under God. That's how they built that's how he's built this program. Program, excuse yeah. me. It's tough. I mean, because here's the deal. I, I'm I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. Oh, look, that's not that's fine. But like when you're getting up there in a no, press I'm, conference, that's what like, I'm saying. Like you, there comes a point where you can't use that as a sales pitch. It just feels fake. That's like, right. But it, I, but it also has been his stance from day I agree. one. So right. Like, but we know that's that. who he is. Right. But, but we yeah. know that. That was also Hugh Freeze's stance. Pretty pretty. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like I, it's kind of stinky. It yeah. kind of is just like don't flip my faith I'm into a selling you. point. All you're doing is trying to pitch it to mama and daddy. We but, might pull up the video at some point because the grin on his face when he like, I got this one. Like, I nailed that one yeah. is hilarious, dude. He's like, looks, he's like, you fucking like that one, didn't you, bitch? It's, it's in, in Clemson. <laughs> Clemson's in an interesting situation, too. Clemson's in the weirdest situation because I feel like the nation just has killed them. Like they're dead. They're right. never coming back. Like they may sneak into a playoff when it's expanded, but like it feels like the Clemson run was a, a very high apex and now a, a steep decline. But the decline I don't think is steep. And I, I think completely it's, agree. the perception is steep, but exactly. it's not. And exactly. then so that's why it's kind of weird. It's it's being turned into this whole like Clemson's gone, but it's yeah. like 
they're a game away from the playoffs right. every year, you know. But the ACC is absolutely hammering the transfer portal. They're hammering recruiting. Um, Miami is building a program right now through NIL. Now, can they coach on the field? I don't know. Is this? I don't have headphones. No, on it won't play through because okay. it's on Grant's computer. Know. We'll we'll figure that. Yeah, out. no, we'll I'll watch check it, it out later. after. Um, uh, but we, we can talk other teams later. For sure, I feel for like sure. LSU. Stay on track. Yeah, LSU needs to do it. But it's like I said, it's at Brian Kelly's really first time being able to get a full recruiting cycle. And shit, this is probably the weirdest recruiting year with just the massive influx of NIL and portal that we've ever seen. I feel like we crushed it. Could, I think this, could we have picked could would it have been nice to get another D tackle, which we're going in the portal to get. tackle. Right. Yeah. There, there's things obviously that we can sit here and nitpick, but like looking at the the overall view of this whole thing, I feel like it was an absolute huge W for LSU. For sure. And and like you you touched on just now, Brian Kelly being able to to have this class from the beginning, develop those relationships with the families and really going into what his program is supposed to look like, program. the development of this program and what, what program. it's supposed to look like. I'm trying to say that, <laughs> but it's just not coming out correctly. Program. Program. Um, and and really like magnifying a guy like Toviano. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's, that's what, what I we want. want. That's what I want. A guy that can come in and contribute early, which is a, a icing on the cake. But that's not how I always have to have my recruits. I For want sure. guys that are character first. That have come from good backgrounds, good families, good good family support. Um, that buy that are gonna buy in easily to structure, and and it well, looks like that's that's what we got from a lot of these kids. And like he said, we got that SEC footprint, but we went really heavy in Louisiana. Yes. And and to piggyback on that, what I liked, and I'm not saying this wasn't done before, and this is what everyone does, but he mentioned it's like we didn't take for granted that some of these kids are 20 miles from campus. We didn't yeah. take for granted. Like we still are going to recruit as hard as we can for the guys we want and not feel complacent because it's like, well, this is a Baton Rouge kid. Obviously, we're going to get him. It's like, no, we're going to make sure we get him. We, we need a quarterback in every class. We got Ricky Collins right down the road. Caleb Jackson is, is a running back that we got right down the road. Holly kids from around here, right? Uh, Trey Holly's uh, Union Parish, okay. which is up north. Local, Farmerville. local -ish. Farmerville. Is that That's north Louisiana. Yeah. That's yeah. North. Um, but, yeah, dude, we, we, we really we did our best to make sure that we grab the top guys in the state. And now, listen, <laughs> the number one overall player in the nation out of Louisiana goes to Texas. Um, and Fraud. <laughs> it hasn't even crossed my mind. No. It's just like, yeah, well, Arch, he's not coming here. I'm right. not worried about that. We've got a good quarterback room right now. That's not what this podcast is going to be about. Um, but the future is bright at that quarterback position. You got Colin Hurley coming in for that next class who now – since signing day happened yesterday, they're starting to pump out that next crew yeah. and they're starting to, to do their chirping from the national media guys. And the, people are drooling over uh, Hurley now. Yeah. He will catapult into one of those top, if not the top two quarterbacks in the nation. So um, we had this discussion yesterday in the group chat, and I just think it's, it's very, very obvious the blueprint and what Brian Kelly sees as this team going forward. And I say that in the fact that we loaded up on tight end. We may literally start Oof. this podcast talking about the tight end recruits. Marion Pimpton, man. but it's Big get. offensive line. It's tight ends. It's the Georgia model. It's like, we want to look at, in two years or maybe even next year, we're going to look at way more of what Georgia is doing with more tight ends and more of a pro-ish looking set, maybe even under center more than, than we're accustomed to than what we saw this year as a more of a four wide, you know, we're just getting shotgun 98% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure there is way more specific terms on, on, on how you actually label these type of modern day offenses. But, and I, I think that's what people need to understand is it is a Georgia model. You're always going to have tight ends on the field, but this is a this is a modern day spread offense with an emphasis of utilizing tight ends as mismatches, not just downhill blockers in the box. This is probably not right, but it, it feels I would say power spread. Like yeah. it's like you're built to run the ball. You're built for power. You're built to kind of run those West Coast concepts that were have been in the NFL for decades and but also have that zone read option. And, you know, obviously LSU is going to keep getting skill position players and it's just going to, 
I you're taking what the defense has given you. The yeah. defense is going to have all these quick players trying to defend this spread yes. concept of all these slot receivers, and all of a sudden you've got Kamari and Pimpton, 6'6", 230 out there. Wait till they, Moffitt gets his hands on him. The wingspan on this cat, dude. They call him pterodactyl. Yeah. I mean, like he is enormous, but he is just one of four studs that we have picked up here. Um, and then the next year's class, you got Galloway, who is excited – like every time someone commits as a tight end, he's like purple That's rain in it. He's like tight end right. room, best in the nation. Like they're not scared of competition. They know that there's going to be multiple sets where there's two tight right. ends. Like they're all going to get they, to eat. They know that it's not going to be a Mason Taylor's on the field for 95% of the time. And hopefully in goal line, I can get it. Like I completely agree. And LSU and Georgia obviously is doing it now, but. LSU's probably going to end up being one of those first like early adopters to go back to what football was a little bit more of running the ball and, and line of scrimmage, getting the big uglies running yeah. around. I just, I, I can't get the picture out of my head of Will Campbell just stride for stride running with, I think it was Chris Curry early in the year. Yeah. Or uh, no, it was Amari Goodwin. 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 They both the, have the, dreadlocks. Hey, the dreads. Yeah. It, you know, my brain's a little fuzzy, but, <laughs> but having those like, extremely athletic guys that are also like big, strong, powerful. We'll get to Zalance Hurd and his comments at some point, but. And it is definitely Zalance. Yeah. Lan I know he goes by Lance. No, he's the Lance. We go by Zalance. There's a lot of Lances Wait, out there. Uncle Lance. What's Pimpton's first name? Kamarian. 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 I only said that because Michael said it first. <laughs> it's I, I, had to, I had to copy had to copy the text off Julie's uh, tweet. Kamari, so I got it. Yeah. So I got it right. Whenever I did send my tweet. Yeah, you spelled, you sounded out. K Kamari and Pimpton, Jackson McGowan. Um, I think that Michael Daughtry, I think that was the only ones that Dowdy. duty might get tricky with you. And he, but Brian Kelly mentioned, and it's not the first time and it's not going to be the last time. He's like, we're not looking for a wide receiver tight end. We're not looking Rathway. for a blocking tight end. We sure. want tight ends that can do it all. And I, look, we could probably go through it. I'm sure Notre Dame and Brian Kelly has had as much success. You know, you can maybe throw Bama in there or they something, but they've had as much success with tight ends, putting them in the NFL as anybody. So it's like, if anybody, I'm going to trust evaluation on any position. It's like, I kind of trust what we're going to do at tight end. Offensively, um, we're in a great spot going into next season offensively. I think defense is where they needed to shore up a lot of that depth. Uh, they needed players that they could come in and play immediately as and we, well. And I think we still need some of those. Absolutely. Guys. Uh, and that's – we'll get into – we want to go through the 25 high school commits that we got uh, and that we have signed. Um, I think it's pretty much over with the high school kids. I know we're pretty sitting much. here Thursday, December 22nd. Um, At the time that this ends up getting posted, the Desmond Ricks thing will be yeah. a known thing. I was going to say, I'd, I'd, I'd be remiss if we don't talk a little bit about Desmond Ricks here um, because that is the last high school recruit – that we were targeting felt good about up until yesterday. It was all, but LSU is, is the team. Um, but guys, this is a kid from Virginia goes to IMG Academy, by the way, no film on the kid. Like IMG doesn't release film. I didn't know that. Like there's a lot of, like you can look at some of his younger days, but he did reclassify. So it's really limited to like sophomore yeah. film. Um, a kid that narrowed it down to Florida, Alabama, and LSU. LSU very much the front runner um, all year, actually, uh, especially after that LSU Alabama football game. Him and Toviano have been chopping it up. Um, and then this past weekend, they closed it out and they really felt very high. Everybody putting in their picks for LSU. Um, but conveniently, you know, he's got his date set day after the first opening day of national signing day so it's a bidding war that's what this was lsu was the bait i want to go to bama and get as much money as possible from them and i'm going to dangle the carrot of lsu's got me in the bag it's and honestly a great play because, for sure because we just got the, sucked into it I you're mean, the not, only commodity commodity left on the board and it's like everybody wants that last little piece that yes. last five star to throw in to just stamp their class and now it's like it's probably more aggressive than it was two days ago which seems crazy that is wild. <clears throat> I'd love to know the numbers that are being tossed around for recruits like this. I know proven commodities like Mark May. Uh, Mark May. No, Drake May. No. Uh, <laughs> Drake May. Uh, Mac Brown. I yeah. got those mixed up. I was about to say <laughs> Mac Markway, Mac Brown, and Drake May. Uh, multiple Mays there. Uh, but he was being tossed around for figures of $5 million. 
crazy. Um, and obviously Alabama was the front runner there to try to poach. Yeah, Drake Jimbo's May. pissed. Yeah, Jimbo's <laughs> pissed about NIL. If you use the uh, Kelly Blue Book um, of on three rankings, it says he's worth two hundred and forty-three. I'm sorry, I just can't. Like, I need to. I need to look at how we're how we're <laughs> gathering this data. I forgot about that. They do have those NIL evaluations. Well, you're wearing the hat. You should know. Yeah, shout out, dude! I finally got our Founders Club Bengal Tiger hat. Uh, on three, on three is crushing you, it. You are part of the Founders Club. That's a huge accomplishment for you. I appreciate Grant was act. I didn't know anything about this hat. Grant yeah. told me about it. He's like, "Yeah, dude, you get your hat." I'm like, "I don't even know what you're talking about." Well, forever, you can just say you were a part of the beginning, the the beginning of Bengal Tiger. And if anyone asks, like, "Yeah, how we long, got this week." How long did it take for it to come in? Quickly, uh, like within a week. week. Yeah, we don't need to get into logistics on this. This. Well, call. I just ordered mine. Uh, yesterday the day before i finally figured out how to do it yeah my dad's like what is that like because he asked me about it <laughs> dad for one dollar a month this yeah. could be yours and, and this is after the conversation about just like all kind of like career developments and all this kind of stuff like we got really into the weeds on like financials of like business development and um i was like well this hat is actually something you get for uh following high school recruits that yeah. want to go to LS <laughs> it was just like a 180 of just like where my brain works right. On a regular basis. Like, no, I still kind of act like a high schooler at times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is what I do when I'm not working. I, yeah. I follow recruiting. Um, okay. So the Desmond Rick situation, for those that are listening a day later, I'm sure he probably signed with Bama. LSU was was the go-to. But yet he has set the date tonight for 530. So that's just like that gives you an opportunity to wheel and deal. According to some people – um, it doesn't look like LSU is going to really start making that play. But Brian Kelly also talked about how um, they are looking to add eight to 10. Uh, it was going to be the early enrollee portal transfers. We already have four. So you're looking like another six are about yeah. to be rolling in. You got to think Denver Harris is one of those guys. Well, he told Feinbaum he, they were anticipating turning over the roster 75% this year. That's nuts. It That's is insane. nuts for a team that was in the SEC championship. Like it's just, it's crazy. They said Harris's announcement dates January first. Now that is, yeah. So I read that as well. It looks like from a source that January first is when they probably the latest, in my opinion. I think it could pop in, at yeah. any time. I think Desmond Ricks obviously had something to do with some of that delay. Um, I think you look at the night before where we had like a flurry of. Defensive lineman yeah. move in. You got Jalen Lee from Florida via Live Oak. Great name. More yeah. of a linebacker name, but that's okay. Yeah. So big bodied kid from Live Oak who originally committed to LSU for some time. Uh Ed left him in the dust, left him at the altar, goes to Florida. At some point, we're gonna have we're gonna be done with these. That but yeah. I feel like we've had that so many times. Well, like he major did it to Burns. Major Burns. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, but well, Jalen Lee is back now after three years of experience. That's that's a depth guy. That's got in-game experience, right? You're not yeah. asking Jalen Lee to roll in here and start. Exactly. You're asking him to spell Wingo and Smith. Well, in the SEC championship game, you watched, and I think even Gary mentioned it. It's like Georgia's just platoon systeming these defensive linemen and these players. Yeah. It's like, hey, we're not, you don't need to be on the field all every play. Like, you go take a break. We got guys. That's what we don't have. LSU right. does not have that luxury. And obviously, because of year one and turnover, Ed Orgeron, whatever, but it's like Keep building that depth. These yeah. all these guys don't have to be second round draft picks. Like you can have guys come in and just be able to spell you for twelve plays a game. And you know, a lot of people are down on him. And I know they kind of they brush that aside in the beginning, of, like right when the transfer portal opened. They're like mm -hmm. Jalen Lee's in the portal. There was no talk about Jalen Lee. Right. Um, a lot of people. I know Grant had mentioned it before, like that he popped in the portal. Do you think we're going to take him? The consensus was that they're not looking at him. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of that had to do with his lack of productivity. In the Founders Club, you knew that was incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the lack of productivity at Florida is kind of glaring. Like mm -hmm. this guy's been there for three years and he got benched and all yeah. that stuff. Florida hasn't developed anybody. So you got to really look at that as has he really been in the best situation as well? And we're, what are we expecting him to be when he comes here? We want him to be depth, but yep. we could be pleasantly surprised with a kid that develops – uh, back home uh, and look 
maybe other people felt differently. I didn't think Makai Wingo would come in. I thought he would be a serviceable guy that gave you some reps, and it was going to be the Jaquel and Roy, Guillory. He was and, freshman all SEC. I know he was, and I'm just saying I just didn't expect He didn't it. look like our other big guy. He I didn't, just, yeah. I just expected him to be like, yeah, you know, Missouri, I get all SEC is all SEC. but It was like, a pleasant surprise. At Missouri, I'm sure he's going to be okay, you know, fine. And he came in and, and developed. and He's like a team captain. Exactly. Like, they love him. He's so a weight room I'm warrior. I'm not saying that's going to happen with Jalen Lee but you can that that type of stuff can happen a lot of times this guy these guys need the right thing and maybe being in a program where you have program. to program excuse me that's on me yeah where you have to fill out your your wellness report like you have to be there's people on top of you maybe right. that's the best thing for him when it look it's not like you know we talk about how shitty it was at lsu and how ed just let shit go crazy florida's not any different florida might even be it would have might possibly have been in a worse spot billy napier's a joke well, yeah, that's fine. I'm all in on that. Like, <laughs> I'm still willing to, to let it play out for a year or two, but I did see a GoFundMe for his buyout. So that, that well, really yeah, I'm resonated just, I'm, well. Yeah, with I'm me. pouring gas on the fire. Sure. I think you definitely need to give him some time, but he just looks like he's straight out of a rehab, in it's, my opinion. Um, if you slapped a, a hospital bracelet on Billy, I'd be like, yeah, this makes sense. It's not fair. Guy's going through some it shit. Is, it's not fair, but he just looks like he is built for the Sun Belt. Yeah. And he was successful there. Exactly. Like, he looks like the Sun Belt master. And it's like, you get into the SEC, and it's like, eh, I don't know, Jim. I don't yeah, know. He thought he had it all squared away, taking quarter. But it's just, that's just the hire that LSU would have made so many times in the past. And we would have been like, well, we can't let the guy from Lafayette leave. We got you know, we got to keep it in the circle. And it's like, no, we're going to go get one of the best coaches that's ever done it. Yeah. That was, yeah. And that was definitely just like a talking heads, like – He's a local guy, like campaigning for himself. Like, sure. shout out Jordy. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them. All yeah. of them. All um, of them. but no, you get uh, Paris Schneed, I, I believe. Shand, Paris Shand, and then Sneed is the Oregon guy. Shand, is Oregon's from, crushing it. Oregon is crushing, it. crushing. It. Yeah, Dan Lanning's got a good little thing going there. Good. Do you think part of Cristobal is like fuck? No, because Cristobal is kind of doing some shit in my Yeah, end but it's not yeah. going just, as well yet. No, so he not, does. I think Dan Lanning's a much better coach. Yeah. I think I don't think Cristobal is an overall good coach. I think he's a good recruiter. I just think Oregon, TCU is are going to be those teams that you're like, oh, these maybe are kind of going to stick around here for a few months. I like that. I like, I, again, I harp on that word a lot. I like some parity. I want some difference, especially nice, when we yeah. expand the playoffs a little bit. It's like. You get TCU in there, you get Oregon in there, you got USC. It's like they could pop off yeah. and knock somebody out. So that's going to be fun to watch. Um, I do Bo like Nicks that Heisman campaign starts today. Right. Bo Nix is back. I think Ty <laughs> Thompson is a kid, backup five-star quarterback there that's going to be like, fuck this, I'm not waiting another year three. Yeah, That's a quarterback that's probably going to pop in the portal soon. Um, okay, back to that. You yes. got Paris Shan from Arizona, D-line depth. You got Sneed or Swinson, not Sneed, Swinson, Braden Swinson. Who was originally, I think he's a George Douglasville, Georgia. Then he went to Oregon. He's an edge guy. This is somebody they want to kind of fill in that BJ Ojolari spot with some depth. Yeah. My Oregon guy texted me after this happened and he's like, he couldn't even crack the line. Sure. And I was like, yeah, he was playing behind Thibodeau. He's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> he's playing behind Thibodeau, but we're not asking him to start. No, like, and that's just, that's yeah. the thing. It's like, look, you've got Xavier Carter, you've got Dion um Waiters. You got Jones. Um, is it Jones? Or the guy from St. James? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you've got Deshaun Womack coming in. That That's a kid you expect to play yes. immediately. This dude is yeah. a monster. Yeah. So, okay. Time out. Before we yeah, get into we've, that. We've, we've scattered ourselves. Yeah. A before we get into that, let's talk about the portal real quick because we're going to go through the kids that we actually have because we're holding these reservations. Um, so, you, you've, got, you've got those flurry of defensive linemen. You weren't able to get the tackles on the high school level, so you're going to see a strong emphasis moving yeah. forward. You still have like at least six spots left in the portal that they have lined up that you should start seeing on Friday, he said. I expect yeah. Denver Harris to be one of those. What's that? Jefferson. Jordan Jefferson. Jordan Jefferson yeah. is a new name from West Virginia. I don't like that. I think it's way too soon to have another Jordan Jefferson. Um, a decade's not enough for you? Well... There's you're, also a Justin Jefferson. You're, you know what? You're right. Support. I'm sorry. I thought it was Justin. Yeah. We if, can, if we it can was, deal with another We can Jordan. do Jordan Jefferson. Uh, might be a little Give confusing. Give us another Harry Coleman. Might be a little confusing to the Facebook fans, but I think those that follow will be There's going to be some people that just have like, 
it's going to be built into their system where they're just going to hate this dude. Like they're going to be bad tweets about him on be Tiger like, droppings. Like God, Jordan Jefferson, JJ, not nah, he can't wear. Nah. Will he ever Cannot fucking wear leave? Nah. Can't wear. It's been here forever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's going to be a guy we probably add for depth. I think the, the, there's a kid from North Carolina that's leaving. That's a really good defensive tackle as well. I haven't seen him listed anywhere though, as far as a target for us. But um, it doesn't. I wouldn't say it doesn't concern me, but being able to go get quality depth in the portal allows you to kind of, I don't know if miss is the right word, but kind of like take a, take a year off from recruiting a specific position because most likely if we got a couple top D tackle guys, like they weren't going to be plug and play guys. Whereas at least in the portal, you're going to get a little more experience and hopefully next year it's one of those things where it's like, Oh shit, we signed five D linemen or we, we signed these dudes. Oh, we're, we're up big for You're the 24 kind of class on D-tackle. Oh, dude, the portal positions. giveth and taketh away. Yeah, well, what, right? what hurt this year was Louisiana D-line were non-existent. Yeah, there were no right. guys. No and on the flip guys. side, O-line was high. And O-line it, was high. But instead of saying, well, we have to do it, we have to take this guy, oh, he's a three-star, we don't really think he's going to be that good, at least now you have the ability to say, hey, we know what this guy is, he's a junior, mm-hmm. we only have to have, we're only going to have him for a year or two, like this can spell us until we can find a guy like a Will Campbell on the D line that we're just very confident can come in and start playing. Yeah. We need to start doing that. Yeah. Right? And I think that's one of the weaknesses that we have circled as we're not really crushing. Kane's a good recruiter. Like he it's is in not- the DNs that I mean, dude, Womack, yeah. you got, uh, we're, we're going to go through them right now. Uh, Jackson Howard. Uh, there's a lot of kids on those, on the edges. And we held on to Mickens for a while. He flipped to Ohio state kid from Indiana. I mean, I don't blame him. Um, Carpenter. Carpenter. I, I like Carpenter. I mean, I know that's kind of a, a trendy thing to say, but the kid from St. Amant. Um, let's go ahead and just go through this list. So these are the kids that we actually secured. The point you know what's of- nice to be an LSU fan? And we didn't – we haven't talked about how we got, like, the number one wide receiver. Like, it hasn't, well, I don't know, <laughs> 20, 30 minutes. It used to be, well, we got Reuben Randall. Like, look, here's the shining thing. And Samson is still, like, the shiny part of your class. But – it doesn't feel we have so much other like things to be positive about. And like, let's be honest, there's going to be a, a decent percentage of these guys who don't end up playing and transfer. And it's like, that's okay. That's just kind of the nature of the game. But I don't know. It just feels good that we've, we can be so happy about like O line, tight end, and like, well, and that's Toviano and, and guys like yeah. this and be like, oh, yeah. And we got some sick wide receivers. I think that's what Kelly was talking about too is like in this age of this transfer portal being so easy. Really recruiting them early and getting to know the families and everything makes it a lot harder for them to want to flip out of, yeah. one, your commitment, but two, into the portal if you're not playing immediately. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I was sold on this development process, this graduating champion. We're not selling everyone three years into the NFL like yeah. we have before. So so I think that's what – he's looking for kids that aren't looking to like – quickly get their bag and, right. and skip town you know make a quick buck so um really really character focus here uh the, the one last thing i'll say about the transfer portal before we move on to our high school list is we did flip aaron anderson yes back from from alabama which is enormous like that's a kid that's immediately going to make an impact on your team he's going to be in the wide receiver rotation from day one and he's probably a return man from day one yeah, not that look man good luck to jack bash i think everyone in this room is a is a jack bash fan but for life for life. Uh, yeah. Going to TCU. Good for him. He's probably going to be able to, to contribute there. They're getting for some sure. dudes, but yeah, they, they flipped. Uh, but to have boy, that come in as Jojo like Earl Jack Bash is yeah. going out, it just wipes away like any like down feeling. It's like, I, you know, good luck, but man, Jack Bash, if this dude comes in, Jack Bash is probably down another spot on the depth chart, you know? Yeah, no. So it's going to be great for depth. It's going to be great for immediate impact as well. Uh, the wide receiver room is stacked. I think special teams is immediately boosted with his return game special tees. Oh, um, yeah, dude. Wait till Polian gets his hands on him. Uh, dude, I don't, I don't think anyone needs to touch <laughs> this kid. I think just give him the ball, let him roll. So um, look for about five to six, maybe even seven more transfers popping in uh soon we have four we have committed, four and they're saying it could end up at eight to ten so yeah kelly four said 38 six more four to six more early enrollees yeah you know um so these are 15 guys of the 25 signees are going to be early but not participating too. in you know, not in the bowl preparation he didn't want no, no, that. No, yeah but they're spring practice definitely yeah, yeah and spring practice is, a lot. is another thing that people over over look is that 
this portal opens back up after spring. Right. So a lot so you of, don't want to you don't want to shoot your wad too exactly. early, and then all of a sudden a couple names that you don't have spots for you could really use and could probably get. Yeah, and I, and you know I don't want to dive into the quarterback situation, but if Jaden Daniels does come back, um, you're probably looking at a spring evaluation, and one of those guys out of Nuss and Walker may leave. Yeah, I'm not, oh, and then you probably pull in and transfer quarterback for depth. How sick would it be if we brought Brennan back? <laughs> Ah. I'm surprised he's not back as like a coach or like an analyst. Coaching what? <laughs> Just sitting there. <laughs> um, they but could then, probably coach special teams. But then you're also looking at D tackle depth as well after the spring yeah. too. So we're gonna we're gonna load up by Friday. I think a lot of these transfers are going to be coming in on Friday. We've already got a flurry, like we said. But I think uh, post spring we're going to load up a little bit more yeah. now. Not And this probably isn't some super novel thing that Brian Kelly's doing, but he's just telling us this. It's awesome that he knows and says, like, yeah, this bowl practice is, like, for the young guys. Like, mm -hmm. we're getting these guys reps and practice reps that they just wouldn't be able to get normally because they're doing scout team and other things. So Which the D linemen will have no choice. Uh, oh, yeah. For this bowl game. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the nature. Look, man, <laughs> and in there. That's just the nature of bowl games. Yeah. We're not the only one. Well, shit, oh, we're Purdue's probably going to be the same, doing exactly. worse than we are, but it's going to be fun. And and bowl games are going to start transitioning as almost like a spring game against another opponent, where you're probably going to start seeing more and more guys who were rotational at best filling into spots because guys are leaving and. I know Mike's probably going to be pissed when I say this. Bowl games don't really matter a ton. And it's just like in the grand scheme of things. In the Are grand scheme of things. Serious? Dude? I love bowl games. I used to love bowl games. How dare you say that? You know I'm right. It's, no, no. Bowl games don't mean anything. We have anymore. to win I understand this one, that. And we, have just, to win this one. we do. No, and I'm not saying that, but it's just. No, for anybody that actually understands the landscape of the business of college football right now. Uh, bowl games do not mean anything most, right now. Most it is, of the teams are going to be playing a different roster a lot of yeah. places than they played in the last game of but the that's, season. Okay, and and the thing about the bowl games is it's it's nice because it was tradition. It was it was fun to see teams get together and battle it out when you never would have seen them play before. It's kind of a, a conference boost of like, hey, you know, we beat yeah. the Pac-10 team, whatever. Um, but nowadays with the playoffs, it doesn't matter, and I, I'm completely on board with that. What I didn't like was the fact that, you know, the, the red shirt situation, losing eligibility, all that good stuff, you can't have your cake and eat it too, Yeah, right? Like that's, that's the difference. And that's why I like, if we're going to transition, which we've already, we're there. It's not like our, if we're going to, we are already at a point where the playoffs are the only thing that matters. Um, so let's incentivize the bowl games if they have to keep them, yes. uh, which I think they're going to go away eventually, or they'll be part of this expanded playoff in some format of a restructured season. But right now, absolutely make it like a freshman expedition yeah. or, uh, you know, who's going to be the next in line for your depth and take it as it is, call yeah. it what it is. And I think that's the problem is like, they keep emphasizing like, Ooh, you, you got to the sugar bowl. Well, guess what? Sugar bowl is not part of the playoffs. Why are we pumping this up? Yeah, you know, and it, it, it's unrealistic expectations of well, fuck, you know, LSU lost to K State last year. We had a rod receiver yeah. chunking the ball down <laughs> to like backups, man. Yeah. Like, what are we talking about? So it's just from a fan's perspective, it doesn't matter. But yet you've got people from ESPN and and all the big. It's all about money, right? That's what everything is, and they pump it up to be this bigger. Uh, game than it really is yeah i mean i think everybody really understands it doesn't really matter it's just enjoyable because you have to watch it it's it's the holidays yeah. everyone's on break right now there's probably a bowl game well and i'll be i'll it. be more excited if it turns into and i'm not saying walker howard's going to be playing in this game but if it turns into oh shit we get to see the freshman quarterback that we only got to see hand yeah, off the ball 20 times we're going to get to see this dude play some and we're going to get to see this wide receiver that we just talked about how great he is and hadn't got to see the field yet or had an injury but it, but we haven't yet gotten to a point where like that's full blown what no, it's it is, not there yet. and that's it's the problem. Not. And that's why you've got guys like Bryce Young and Will Anderson getting paid to come back and play a Sugar Bowl, yeah. which doesn't mean anything. It's because it's airtime, it's content, it's Alabama's on the screen and they're winning, yeah. right? Like 
they do not want to ever take a loss, especially on New Year's Eve or whatever oh, yeah. the case I might make be. that my Twitter background if K-State just pummels them. Beautiful. Remember how amped we were when Trevor Knight in Oklahoma was just awesome. dominating Bama in that awesome. Sugar Bowl? That was one of the more fun days that we've had a, a football experience that had LSU was not involved in. Those Sugar Bowls are great. They used to be exciting. Um, you just have to take it for what it is and yeah. not really care too much about it. And I, I've definitely come to that. I've, I've come to grips with that. Yeah. Actually, last year was kind of it for me. It was like, okay, why am I even watching yeah. this? Um, let's go back to our Yeah, I, we, I got a bail in a little bit. So let's start talking about some of these guys that you want to cover here so we can uh, clean so it up. So we don't have to harp on all of them and go into – detail with them but grant Sheldon just, we'll we'll go through each one and just kind of scroll with me by the ranking or position you can just stay on the ranking um so we're using the consensus the on three consensus is the high school guys as founding members we would only use that and the consensus is for those that don't understand what that means it is the average of all three major media outlets like rivals 247 on three they all have their individual rankings which and then espn, ESPN down there, like, yeah. it's like the the meme where all the goofy there's like three regular dragons and one goofy one the goofy one's espn so uh, you know like shelton sampson deshaun womack zalance heard they're all five stars on on three which um, one are you most excited about out of those out of those three out of those i would three, say that's like your that's your apex of your class you can throw toviano in there if define you want. excitement Toviano is definitely in that. I would say there's there's four. There's Toviano, Womack, Samson, and Hurd, who are your top four. So I guess which one – okay, so I'll ask two questions. Which one do you think will be the most immediate impact, and which one do you think is like the best pro, like most likely to get drafted first round, three-year gone? Yeah, guy? I think immediate impact, it's a toss-up between Womack and Toviano because yeah. I think – Obviously, that's a thin position, and those are two guys that can play immediately. I think the transition to the college game is going to be easier for Toviano. I've convinced myself that Womack is the guy. Like, it's just he's going to be as good. And look, it's not fair. <laughs> for sure. Not fair. But I feel like he's just going to walk in and be like, oh, yeah, we still have BJ Ojolari. Like, that's how I've already convinced myself of this dude. That's like, what they want. That's what they expect. Yes. And I think statistically, I think he's going to like. I'd be better than and guess DJ. what you and look he's a freshman you don't game plan around him but it's like it's not like you can really help when you got Harold Perkins on the other side I think highest draft pick is Mies Lance Hurt I do too that's I, why I was wondering because yeah. I kind of have that sneaky feeling that he's going to be that like eighth eighth pick six six three oh five comes in probably plays immediately as a freshman where I don't know only left tackle I, yeah um <laughs> I, I don't know where he's going to play he'll find a spot. He'll yeah. find a spot. Uh, Brian Kelly is not in the business of, you know, we're pampering. not going to let this dude go anywhere. Right. We're not, we're not pampering people just because they started the year before. Yeah. If you're the best five, you're the best five well, on that I, offensive line. And I think, you know, I'm sure Will Campbell wants to play tackle and I'm not saying he's going to move, but it's like, I think our guys are going to be okay with being like, yeah, we want our best five out here. Like Definitely. I'll play guard for a year if that's what, yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to unseat Campbell. I agree. I think he's going to come in and probably unseat one of those guards um, like or unseat. Um, Emory. Jones and you move think, Jones. That's what guard. I was going to ask. Do you think Emory could slide into guard I, I pretty think easily? I think I think Emory is a better better guard, but he's just so he's quick on that outside that he was able yeah. to hold his own. You don't really want to stunt that development, in my opinion. But at the same time, but if you got a guy, if you got another Will Campbell, yeah, if you can book in that with your guy you thought was going to be a book in and have him, at they'll guard, figure it out. He'll play. Mention, every alignment's back. Yeah, that's the thing. It's starter, like, starter wise. If if Hurd comes in and starts, he's a dog because you've got returning starters, grown man the board. type stuff, and you'll have returning starters for the following year too. Yes, like massive. And, and you got Dellinger in there too. That that you yeah. know, obviously, everyone he's the likes. sixth man that's coming. And crazy. I love how it's just such a Louisiana base. It's it's yeah. Monroe kids. It's Baton Rouge, it's like guys that we used to see lining up in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, it's those those West Monroe type, you know, those yeah. guys in that area that were like, well, I'm not going to Cam LSU. Robinsons, you know, those type of kids. So they got a good barber, and yeah. so the Lance Heard is from Neville. He's a Monroe kid, six six three oh five consensus five star. He's your highest rated prospect um, on on three. Uh, obviously, Shelton Sampson and, and Wilmack are five stars, but they're four consensus. Um, Shelton Sampson, uh, wide receiver, six four kid. Out if of, he committed to yesterday, everyone would be losing their minds. Yeah, uh, Splugeon. Uh, that's a Catholic high product, wide receiver. Do um, we have a Moscona Catholic high drop? 
No, no, I don't think we have that on the board. <laughs> but yeah, Shelton was a kid that a lot of people in the beginning were worried was going to go to Bama. You know, he's one of those top receivers. Anybody from Louisiana at the top dog is, you know, you is all, a threat yeah. to go to Bama. Yeah, absolutely. He's one of those kids. Uh, we got him early. We got him in. He was committed, and and he's held on to that commitment, never wavered. That's I really respect that about Shelton Sampson because there was no quiet. drama. It's just yeah. like, yeah, we've got a top receiver from the state. He's a dog. Let's roll with him. Um, the next cat there. By the way, uh, I don't know if Shelton Sampson breaks the lineup as it's a freshman. Tough. He's one yeah. of those kids that like he's good enough any other year to come in and probably contribute. I'm sure you'll see him playing, mm. but as far as a Rotation, starting four, yeah. like not probably not going to happen. I mean, Booty locked up. You're going to have Booty neighbors, neighbors, Brian Thomas, and probably Aaron Anderson. Yeah, that those are going to be your four, and then you've all got to be hard to crack that. It's just all like, of them are good. It's just like in the. 2019 season where it's like we probably have some other dudes but it's like what are we gonna do take jamar chase off the field yeah. what are we gonna do take jefferson like we can't but like, you these can are the guys you can give them rest you can have them hey he's got a little bit of a, a nagging injury that's fine we can go ahead and play chris hilton he's but developed someone or, that's someone that's committed and understands the room i'm sure he wants to come in and play but i'm sure he's not gonna be well i, I thought i was gonna play i'm in the portal well it also breeds competition mm -hmm. kyron lacy drops two balls back to back it's like okay bud like it's it's time throwing Shelton Sampson and see what you're going to lose do. your opportunities to even show what you can do if you keep doing that. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I like Lacey. I still think Lacey is going to be is one of those guys player. who's going to be so underrated. If he gets the opportunities, he can he's going to be able to make some plays. For he's him. got a lot of fight in him. I like to see that. He's he's a very animated receiver, yeah. which usually results in in positive output yeah. for the offense overall. Well, Whether a guy it be that's going to be downfield or, blocking his ass yeah. off, yeah, every play, even if he hasn't gotten the ball a little bit. Deshaun Womack, again, a guy that they expect to come in and contribute immediately. That's that's the hope. At the same time, that's why they're kind of loading up with some of these transfer guys to make sure yeah. if his development is not We're up not putting to speed. all our eggs in him playing from snap one. But the fact that you got the number one player out of Maryland, um, the the top 40, top 39 overall player in the country – uh, at, at a defensive end position, which is so highly valued, right? Defensive ends, DBs, quarterbacks. Yeah. It's like kind of your top dogs and left tackles. Um, just a very, very high value kid that could have easily gone anywhere else. Apparently the story was, it was up until the facts was come in that all of a sudden the offers were like, Hey, we'll pay you this much. Like yeah. the bidding started <clears throat> going up and he didn't waver. Um, that's a really big get. I know we like to talk about how we failed at defensive tackle. It's committing to a program program mm -hmm. and not committing to a, a dollar sign or even a coach. It's committing to the philosophy that that's that they're instilled. I have no doubt that Brian Kelly and all the position coaches have fully explained what these dudes are getting into. It's not a free for all. It's like, yeah, we expect you to wake up in the morning, do your stuff go eat, go to class. Like, it's like, we don't, we're not fucking around here where you can just right. skip a sociology class and then come to practice. Like we expect and demand that you guys do everything the right way. Some of some kids, it's not going to work out for. Yeah. There's a mission at hand. And, and I think they did their proper vetting and they found high character kids that are going to be willing to put in the work. But like, if you know, you're committing to that and it's easy to say sitting here, a 50 grand here or a little bit of extra money or hey we'll promise we'll do you something here probably doesn't affect you as much it's like i know what i'm getting into i already yeah. i already know i don't need to go here because i can get an extra couple bucks and uh, you know i i don't know i i like what we're doing jv antoviano is is the next highest ranked player um again a guy that they see coming in early and playing safety right out of the gate um you, you really shored up that safety yeah. room i think cornerback is thin but this kid can kind of play multiple positions um i think muscona talked about that how he asked that directly to brian kelly do you expect any of these safeties that you signed because you know you got kylan jackson yeah. you got yates you got daughtry choviano can any of them and, and stamps um can they play corner as well and he's like you know i, I don't think he asked that directly i think it was about nickel if anyone slides like the can nickel anyone or... slide and play multiple positions he's like no you know like we really like we like where they're at for safety. Mm -hmm. You know, we want that depth there at safety. So that says a lot like that they plan on playing these kids at that position probably very early. Now you do have um, Burns back. Uh, you do have Sage Ryan. You do have, uh, oh God, uh, Brooks yeah. playing safety as well. Toviano adds that length 
right there. Six foot, 185, heavy hitter. I think Toviano is one of those, like, I'm ready to play immediately. I don't know how big his ceiling is. Mm -hmm. He's more of like, probably this is who I am right out of the gate. I'll be an SEC contributor, get drafted in second yeah. round. Everyone will love it. Yeah, I yeah, can see that. I, I could, he, and he's a good kid. Uh, is DJ Chester next on the on the list because I feel like he's not. Okay, the next guy is Jalen Brown, the wide receiver from Miami. Um, elite speed, top end speed, takes the top off of coverage. He's a kid mm. that uh, was not like um wavering at the end but miami was definitely trying to make a big push mm. he was an original five star like one of the top 20 prospects in the nation uh senior year wasn't as productive as his junior year so they dropped him to the number 92 overall player I hate to see it little undersized 61160 um but he is somebody that you get some you get some weight on him Dante smith was a yeah. undersized guy he's he's similar to him i, mm -hmm. I think that's a really good comparison i think speed is really where where you get Jalen Brown. So you're going to be able to do some things with him. Yeah, guys like that, they may may have trouble sneaking onto the, the field. One. And every now and then, guys like that, it's like, oh, we got to have him on the field. Mm -hmm. Was that the one or the other receiver that uh, Kelly was comparing to Will Fuller? I didn't hear that. Um, it was. It I'm was almost him. positive it was him. Yeah. He said it was great comp by Shea. So Founders yeah. Edition, good job, Mike, kind of give him that tidbit. Um, so Jackson Howard, number one player out of Minnesota. Uh, anytime, any, anytime, anytime you can get you the can number one player out of Minnesota, you have any to player out of Minnesota, especially the number one. Um, Robbinsdale Cooper is where he went to high school. I'm not sure. I just wanted to read that word. Uh, he's an edge rusher, 6'4, 245. Another kid that looks like he could probably bulk up and kind of slide kind of that alley gay position where he's a defensive end but if you needed him to shift inside he's got a little bit of that pop where he can long kid it's been a long time since i've been this confident in our strength and conditioning program yeah. to program to absolutely just like do what needs to be done for some of these guys especially freshmen coming in next up is is really DJ Chester is a guy at 6'5", 315. He's a first-round draft pick in my head solely on name. I yeah. love him. I love him. Interior offensive lineman that was the uh, – going into – I think he committed around Thanksgiving. Um, but he was the biggest non-committed interior offensive lineman that we were looking at. Mm. Um, Auburn definitely tried to make a late splash and flip him, but he he stayed committed. Brad Davis did a really good job of of making sure that he was locked up uh dj is a kid that probably could can contribute early as well uh really big it's tough to find a spot but yeah it's just man looking at this offensive line that we have brought in the past two seasons it's just a world of difference yep. from what we're used to seeing on the o-line just really solid kids there's no fat there's not a lot of sloppiness it's yep. not a lot of well you know if they can lose that baby fat it's like no these are men yeah like they're ready to roll immediately and chester uh, as an interior guy that is one of those that's ready to roll. Kylan Jackson, safety out of Zachary, um, hard-hitting kid, great program. Like you said, we've shored up that position. Like, I, I fully expect one, two of these guys. One to of them's going to pop. Exactly. Uh, Kylan Jackson, uh, you know, one of those guys that heavily recruited kid, wanted to stay home, another Baton Rouge area, played at Zachary, a really good program, 6'2". Uh, 195 196 whatever um kind of that in in the box type of safety heavy hitter downhill good quality prospect God, that, that's star. just like that's the best it's got to be the best compliment like if you're a safety and someone says oh yeah get him in the box and you can hit heavy it's hitter. like that's gotta be it's fun the best yeah. because it's like oh okay this dude's craig lawson and can just head hunt it's not like oh he's rangy he's soft he doesn't want to hit it's like you know, He's a covered safety. In the, like, age, no. in the age of like soft football where you can't hit anybody, to be like considered yeah. the heavy hitter has to just feel so good. That's nice. You also have to like teach them instructional videos of keeping your head. Now, I, hey, look, Polian has an entire <laughs> book series on exactly that. So once again, not worried. Um, the next player is is Caleb Jackson from Liberty Magnet High School, another Baton Rouge kid, running back, 5'10, 196, high four star player. Um, by the way, Basically all four stars and five stars. I know. Here. So all fall, all really, fours. really good quality. Top five, top six overall class. Uh, Caleb Jackson, he is one of those kids that him and Trey Holly, the other running back commit that we'll get to later on down the list. Um, the local Louisiana running backs that we produce, there's just some type of confidence that 
as a fan, yeah. I automatically think one of those is going to come in and play. You know, especially with the way the, the running back room looks right now. There's I've, opportunities. I've seen some smoke about Emory leaving, testing the draft waters. We'll see what that's about. But you got Josh back. You got a ah, fragile, I would say, Armani Goodwin. And a lot of unknowns. I think Josh Williams is your known. Like, you know what you're going to get. He's probably not going to improve greatly going into next year. Shit, maybe he does. I don't know. He's but steady, Eddie. You have a known, known commodity there. And then what we've always hoped for Emory is what we're going to switch to some of these freshmen and yeah. be like, well, hopefully he's just electricity in a bottle that we can throw a swing pass to. Right, exactly. Emory might be gone. You got steady Eddie Which with Josh, and it, then you got a fullback in Kane. Yeah. Um, I think – Goodwin, if he's healthy, he's a he's, he's a beast, good, good right? Back. Absolutely. Um, he's just got to stay healthy, and he's not really your overall every down back. Yeah, he's not a guy we go into the season being like, well, th- we got this guy, so fuck you guys, fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, Caleb Jackson and Trey Holly. We'll get to Trey Holly in a second, but Caleb is one of those just steady, good mm. Louisiana running backs that has that speed, but he also can play between the tackles. So really good pickup there. Never wavered. Another kid that was just like, yeah, let's lock it in. Baton Rouge and Once footprint. again, that's a reason why you, you, us as fans, you don't get as excited about these guys because they committed months ago and they're steady and they're solid in their commitment. You just kind of forget about them. New Orleans kid, Tyree Adams, offensive tackle. Another name, love. 6'5", go back up, 6'6", 283, um, out of St. Aug. Really good program to program, program. Uh, to recruit from. Keep that footprint in New Orleans. Frank's going to do what Frank does. Speaking of St. Og, there is a kid, a D lineman that we're considering. We're gonna. Saying. Did we start considering him? I know some I've fans have posted. Yeah, yeah, like it's been tossed around. I'm thinking they're waiting for all these other transfers to probably because he's like a February guy. Frank's got to get in Brian Kelly's ear and be like, "We don't need to call it Saint Augustine." Like, yeah, just call it Saint Og. <laughs> because at first that. I was like Saint, like I was like, "Is that the Florida?" Play? I was like, "Oh wait, no, that's our Saint Og." You yeah. Know? Because like, no, I feel like I he's got to just go like with that. the og. I mean, Augustine is the proper. Oh yeah, term. he was right. I'm just saying, like, you got we got to teach him. Like, it's just saying og. Yeah, like, yeah, we got to teach him. Like, just because that's the right way to say it yeah. doesn't mean that's how we say it. Yeah, he's gonna like somehow <laughs> give like the full McDonough 35 preparatory. McDonough. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like we just gotta we gotta teach him. Frank's gotta get in his ear just a hair. Is all I'm saying. Another solid offensive line. You know, he probably needs a year or two, but he'll be. Yeah, I don't see him as as a Lance Hurd or a DJ Great Chester stuff. where they could probably roll in He's and play. Probably but... a guy that if he waits around his turn is going to be a contributor. But if he wants to play somewhere, he could see him maybe in the portal in a year or two. Like it's one of the. It's just that we're going to have a lot of those guys that are probably good players that aren't going to be able to find a spot well, to play. And it's it's always good to have offensive linemen that that are good and ready to roll. Yeah. It's the it's the most injury prone position. For sure. It's 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 a it's a it's a value pick there man i think tyree adams is really good and then you get your um obligatory quarterback uh ricky collins you need one in every class i've I've said for a while that i thought he would start this year so walker howard's out (laughs) well (laughs) i think people don't talk about ricky because one he was kind of he was recruited we had a lot of good quarterbacks in this class, and then three of them were from Louisiana. Yeah. You had Holstein, Manning, you got Ricky Collins. Ricky Collins, the lesser of the three, based on rankings, he's still name, a yeah. top 200 overall player in the nation, a four-star quarterback, um, a 91.85. I mean, like anybody that's in the 90s of their overall rating, they're going to be a solid player. So, we, you know, with our quarterback class or with our quarterback room as it is, this is a great depth guy, mm-hmm. a great guy that if somebody leaves, After the spring, boom, he's that next in line. He's your guy that can be like a Jaden Daniels with his legs. The kid can move. He's very athletic. He's got a great arm, um, and he's a homegrown kid. Mm -hmm. He's not somebody that's going to get homesick and bail on you at the last minute and leave your quarterback room vacant. Um, Mac Markway, (laughs) big-ass tight end, 6'4", 250. Uh, Four-star player, top 240 overall. From the school that uh, Steeples – Coach Shat in St. Louis. Good find. Nice. Uh, You're a founding member too, aren't you? How do you how do you pronounce it? The Smith. I feel like that's too easy. Yeah, <laughs> it can't be. It can't be that easy. I'm sorry. Um, but he's from St. Louis, Missouri. Tough streets of St. Louis. Yeah. Um, but he's at yeah. So like Grant said, he's from the school that that Steeples was the head coach at. Um, give, give me all them tight ends. Tight end room is stacked. Uh, Mac Markaway never wavered. 
a big time tight end that we got early in the process. Uh, really excited about the room moving forward. This is another one of those guys where, like you talked about, Mashburn, the Mashburn fans, the the Nick Stores yeah. fans, the people that have been seeing. Unfortunately, guys, your your time of seeing them on the field is done. Right, you've got serious, real tight ends now that are going Breaking to be. News: Which Jane Daniels announces he's returning. God, I thought you were going to say going pro. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got our instant reaction there. <laughs> That's expected. I, yeah, That's I've, expected. I felt like we would have known well before today if he was going to the draft. Very interesting. It, it makes us uh, makes spring something fun to talk about. Spring will be interesting. Um, but listen, Jaden Daniels is. A- I don't like. I don't like when you do like the tweet newspaper article to say you're coming back because there's so many words, and I just I automatically think, assume what, it's I'm going pro. I think our social media team. I'm not does saying Jaden oh, does Jayden this together. Do this, yeah. but I just don't like it because it's like Tiger Nation. I love every minute I've been here. I'm like, okay, you're gone, and then you get to the end, you're like, oh, oh, okay. But I don't normally read that. Man, it's too many paragraphs for me. I think it depends on what you want to see happen. A hundred percent. I mean, when Kayshawn did it, I was like, my God in heaven. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I was <laughs> stunned because I was so sure that that one was going to be, I'll see you later. But now listen, with Jaden Daniels coming back, I, I think he needs, he needs the competition. He needs heat on him from, from Nuss and, and Howard. Uh, but I expect one of those guys to leave. So it just makes everything very interesting. I'm I'm fine with Dan. I like Daniels. I think Daniels brings a lot to the offense. I, I am happy. He like has I, to let it yes. rip more. I think you know we obviously have to see a, a jump from year one to year two and his just confidence and, and trust. We need the Florida Jaden Daniels to be the guy. Well, that's the thing. I, you you have to have the backup ready to roll. Yeah, and I think he's got to be on a tight leash. You can't have these games where you've got a flooded wide receiver room running wide open routes and you're you're taking sacks because you can't read or let it rip. If your confidence is not not there as year five of a star as a starter, is your contact falling out? Yeah, it's a little dry. But um, no, I'm trying I'm just trying to like play out the scenarios in my head of what these other quarterbacks are gonna do. The scenario is and what I hope to happen is that you're you're playing for the backup position right now. And then the third string's transferred. Third string is transferring. Ricky so Collins is going to be your third string quarterback. It's if if Brian Kelly and and Sloan want to or they see a lot of potential in Nussmeyer, it might be like, okay, well, I think we win a championship with this guy. Are we okay with parting with Walker Howard and riding with Colin Hurley as that's And I don't think I don't think that's the answer. I think the answer is Walker Howard's going to be the number two quarterback in spring, and Nuss Meyer's going to go pro in something other than LSU football. He's going to play with Jack at TCU. Good for him. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens there, but I I think all of these assumptions. The rant is on fire. Yeah. Right now. It, to be very clear, Jaden Daniels is such a weapon, and I think he could definitely be. I think he could be a Heisman contender. I agree. Well, if he's he be can top read the six, field. Yeah. Uh, it's going into the there. year. I think our offense is going to be filthy, dangerous. If Jaden Daniels can pull the fucking trigger yes, yes. and throw the football down the field. If yes. he learns how to throw the football down the field, this offense will be unstoppable. Obviously down for some designed runs, but like we need to be willing to sit in the pocket, go through some progressions. Shit. I almost hope he has a bum ankle like to start the year. So we kind of get what we saw at the beginning of the Georgia game. Where he where has like, to throw. I, 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 I can't really get out of here. So I better go through some progressions and get the ball out of my hand. Like that's, that's what we need to see. And who's to say he's not going to develop and get better. Right. Like look at Joe Burrow that's, stats year one. They're yeah, not Joe Burrow was a projected off. sixth round draft pick going yes. into, or maybe not even that far. I think yeah, he might have missed third or fourth. Whatever. He wasn't it's interesting. the best quarterback of all time going in. I'm not saying that's what Jaden Daniels will be, but the hope is that he progresses, gets yeah. better at seeing the field, reading the defenses. Now, I, well, I, you have to have that backup ready to go, though, and you have to have Jaden on a short well, leash because we cannot we cannot waste these receivers yep. another season. We need Jaden Daniels to throw a pick in the bowl game, and then the defensive lineman for Purdue just absolutely cleans oh, yeah. him out, and then I think we're on to something. That Say that again, nice. but on camera. <laughs> on camera. They might have thought that was me. No, I'm kidding. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, we need to. We need. So I think what this tells Kelly and staff, like, I got to see what Walker and and Nuss have. Yeah. Because I, yeah, I think you can't make it comfortable for Jaden. Like, you have to make it uncomfortable. It can't just be, hey, like, do whatever you got to do. You can have an Arkansas right. game. You can have a, a bullshit game. Yep. Um. Who, he had a lot of bullshit games. 
There was a lot of great games, but there was a lot of bullshit games. Yep. Now, during those bullshit games, I if you had a Walker to go in and start slinging it and take his spot, that is what I want to be able to see yeah. if he fails at that development. I, I think if we rewound the tapes a few years to our first year of podcasting, Joe Burrow's first year, we probably had some takes that was like, well, Joe Burrow's not the guy, but he can get us to the guy. So yeah. it's like, it, it's just... We don't know, and we'll see. And it's, he's I, dangerous. If he can throw that football, it'll be open, dangerous. Open competition. All right, let's get to the last guy or two that you want to talk about. Let's go. And your boy's got to bounce. Yates, Texas kid, safety, another guy that can move cornerback and safety. Trey Holly is really uh, the next running back that I think is going to be that. He's from Union Parish. Little guy, but he's quick as hell. Yeah. He is the all-time. Oh, give, give the step. He's the new all-time leading state, Louisiana State rushing record holder. Great sign. Uh, a kid video just put out. It's been his dream to play at LSU his whole life. That's what you want. You yep. want to get those kids that are going to bleed purple and gold. Kamari and Pimpton is the other one I feel like outside of those top four is going to contribute early. This yes. kid is going to be in the starting lineup. Even if it's just red zone. Yeah. He is 6'6", 230 pounds out of Fort Worth, Texas. Kamari and Pimpton. He's a, he allows you to do things that you can't do with Mason Taylor also. Mason Taylor and Pimpton are going to be your two tight ends moving forward for the next few years. Um, Flint's going to put some weight on this dude, bulk him up. He's going to get him faster, stronger, and this dude's going to be a problem. I hope it's for us because this dude's going to be a problem for three years. He was originally committed to Vanderbilt. He was a flip on signing day. Texas came on late to try to get him, um, but it was down to LSU and Vandy. LSU pulled it out because of what we're doing with this offense and the the development that Denbrock and, and Kelly have a history of developing tight ends. Kyle Parker, another one that uh, was was wavering a little bit at the end out of Texas, a very fast playmaking wide receiver, underrated. If there's anyone, back-to-back guys right here, the most underrated players in the class, Kyle Parker and Whit Weeks. Uh, Whit Weeks, the brother of Wes Weeks. Yeah linebacker out of georgia we got to um, figure out what his other brother's name is walt walt weeks <laughs> i don't know but what do the, you think his gpa is grant real quick his yeah oh, what do you think? okay that's what i thought parker or weeks 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 no no weeks no definitely <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh no that's awful uh linebacker wit weeks ended up being ranked higher than tackett curtis which is nice tackett was that usc commit out of uh, manny louisiana linebacker uh, Whit Weeks is, is a monster. If you go and watch his film, yeah. this kid's going to be on the kickoff team immediately. He's a headhunter. He's better than his brother. Yes, yes. His um, brother played a significant amount of snaps. He is he better than his brother. Um, he's great depth with Christian Brathwaite, who is going to be the other linebacker who was originally committed to Baylor. He's from Cy Ranch, Cypress, Texas. Uh, so those are your two backers, Whit Weeks and Brathwaite, Kai Preen, uh comes in from St. James. He's an athlete, another wide receiver, another you know solid bootleggers, great wide receiver out of Louisiana. Shout out Jimmy D. Yes. Uh so that's Kyle Parker, Kai Preen. I know you're Weeks. in the Founders Club. Can we still give we Jimmy? Can, yeah, Jimmy's Jimmy's a G. Jimmy's Jim, Jimmy's Jimmy. Uh Michael Daughtry, a kid that is obsessed with LSU. He's a safety um out of loganville georgia grayson high school really good high school to get kids it's crazy that we're like getting here to the end and i, I know it's a lot of schools but it's like we're still talking about four star guy like you yeah. know we're still talking about highly we're just hitting guys. the threes now and we're sitting here like yeah no i mean like we've we've mentioned 15 other dudes but like i think this guy's good and yeah. it's like they're still like obviously really good players we went in and got four kids from the state of georgia this year that's big. Just kind it's of huge. incredible. That just shows you how filthy George is. I know. Because you know they got their top guys. Yeah. But uh, let's keep building those connections at those high schools. I really like Jeremiah Hughes. He's a really sticky corner, six foot one eighty out of Bishop Gorman. Uh really, really big school out in Vegas. Great school to go with. Uh, Snoop Dogg. He, he's a quick kid, somebody that that committed early, Rattler. never wavered. Uh, I think Rattler. Went Great there. baseball. I'm pretty school sure Rattler too. went think, there, and the uh, Dorian Thompson, the UCLA quarterback. I think went there. Joey Gallo is from there. And then I think no, no one cares, Grant. <laughs> who was who was the quarterback? Um, that the white kid quarterback, Peyton Manning, committed to Ohio State. Tate Martell. Tate Martell. That's Martell. who I was thinking of when I said Rattler. That's yeah, exactly Tate Martell who I was went thinking to Bishop of. I just had the wrong he name. He played. In my head. Yes. He played against him because yes. I think they were uh, – no, yeah, something like that. We were on the same page. I just spit out the wrong name. It's been, I think they were on that show. Yeah, not a Netflix. lot of sleep. <clears throat> Paul, Mugen- Paul Mubenga, 
is a, a, a developmental guy and offensive line from Buford, Georgia. Brian Kelly talked a lot about love him. Buford, Georgia. Always good to get a kid from Buford. I love Jackson McGowan. He's another big tight end, kind of like your wide receiver type of tight end. Every highlight that he has is sick one-handed catches. Uh, at the last minute, he decommitted from Cincinnati. Ohio State came in on him. Uh, it was Ryan Day versus Mike Denbrock, and Denbrock obviously having those Cincinnati roots flipped him to LSU. That's another big get out of the state of Ohio. Another great addition to the tight end room. Uh, then you got a couple in-state kids with Dylan Carpenter and Ashton Stamps. Uh, Carpenter, massive senior season. Um, defensive lineman from – defensive end, 6'4", 250 out of St. Amant. Uh, and then Ashton Stamps, Stamps is a safety from, from Rummel, uh, who a lot of people are very – local guys very high on. He so, blew up the camps, I think, which is what he earned his offer, and you just got to keep it. If Brian like Kelly could recruit, man, we'd be in a good spot. Do yourself a favor and watch Dylan Carpenter's highlights of his senior season. There's a reason why LSU jumped all over him pretty quickly. Uh, could have a J.J. Watt on our hands. I'm only saying that because he has got a mustache. Um, is that it? GPA. Is it? Do you have anything? I just I, rambled. For, no, I mean, we went through all the players, I, I think. Catch my breath. Um, no, I'm just very excited about where the program's going. And like at program. Um like I said, man, a lot of the guys are going to transfer just like they're going to transfer out of every other ones. But if we can keep doing what we're doing, trust the process, we're going to, we're going to be all right. Guys, uh, <clears throat> tonight, which is yesterday, if you're listening tomorrow, um, <clears throat> you will have seen probably Desmond Ricks commit to Alabama. Screw them. We're getting Denver Harris. Yes. Look for a lot of big commits popping. If you're listening tomorrow, uh, it will be Friday, so the next day. Um, a lot of big transfer portal guys, heavy emphasis on D line DBs. Uh, great class. Trust excellent, the process. excellent class. What you got? Make sure you wrap your pipes. All right. Wrap your pipes and go get a pound of gold sweatshirt. They're still, we're available. not sponsored by condoms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You want to hit the over and out before I hit the end? Oh, over and out. All right.